Welcome back. This week we're going to learn about sort algorithms and we're going to start by learning the simplest sort algorithm, the bubble sort. In this lesson we'll describe how the bubble sort works, demonstrate it and evaluate its strengths and weaknesses. Next lesson we'll write a programme to do the bubble sort. All sort algorithms have the job of putting the elements of a list or array into order. What order? Well, if they're number values, it will be into numerical order. And if they're string values, then it will be into alphabetical order. The advantage of putting a list or array into order is, as we have found out, that it is much, much faster to search for the items that you need in a sorted list. That's because you can use the binary search algorithm, which is massively faster than the linear search. However, sorting a list takes quite a lot more time than searching it. There's more than one way of sorting a list and over the next couple of weeks we'll learn about four key ways of sorting a list. The bubble sort is an algorithm that can be used to sort a list. I would say that it's the easiest of the algorithms to write and to understand. However, the big disadvantage is that it is the slowest for the computer to carry out. So let me just quickly describe how the bubble sort works. Don't worry, we'll be going over this many times. The program traverses the list. You remember how a traverse works with a list? It's a for loop that counts through every item in the list. So we'll traverse the list from element zero to the end of the list. At each stage inside the list, we will compare each element with the next element in the list. And if they're the wrong way round, I mean they're not in numerical or alphabetical order, then we will swap them. However, going through that list like that once is not enough to completely sort the list. We then have to repeat that traversal and repeat it over and over again until we can get right through the list with no more swaps. At that point, the list is fully sorted. So I think as I've described it, you'll be imagining how we're going to write that in Python or any other programming language. In order to traverse the list, we'll use a for loop. And in order to compare each item with the item that follows it, we'll have to use an if structure. Inside the if structure, we'll need to swap the values of two variables. And the whole thing that I've described so far will have to be put inside a big while loop, which will keep repeating the whole thing until we've got no more swaps. We'll come back to this later. If you're my student, my students, by the way, are not as young as this, but if you are my student, we're going to act this out in class. So that's quite a nice way of learning and remembering it. However, moving swiftly on. Let's demonstrate it instead on the screen. Here's a list X, Z, T, R, W. So it's clearly not in sorted order. So let's see how the bubble sort would go about sorting this list. The first traversal, the first pass down the list. The marker starts at the first position in the list. That would be element zero. The element is compared to the element that follows it, which in this case is Z. Those elements are the right way round. X comes before Z in the alphabet. So the marker moves on to the next item in the list and nothing happens. All right, so the, the marker, the counter is now at the second element in the list, which has the value Z. 
Let's compare that to the following value, Z, T. They are the wrong way round. That T should come before Z in the alphabet. So we swap them. T, Z. So the values are swapped around and the marker or counter will move on to the next item in the list, Z. We now compare the element Z to the one that follows, to the one that follows, and once again they're the wrong way round, so swap them, R, Z, and the counter moves on, 1. Counter is pointing at uh, the fourth element in the list, uh, that would be element 3 using the counter and Z compared to the element that follows W. Once again, they're the wrong way round. So swap the values. The counter moves on. And when the counter reaches the end of the list, we stop. The traversal's finished. So the first pass through the list is completed. There have been three swaps altogether. All right, so my list is now X, T, R, W, Z. Clearly it is not yet sorted, so we need to traverse it again. The counter begins, or the, the mark of the counter begins at the start of the list. Compare it to the one that follows X, T, they're the wrong way around. So they swap T, X, the counter moves on. X, now compare it to the element that follows R, X, R. They're clearly the wrong way around. So swap them, T, R, X, and the counter moves on. Compare X to W, they're the wrong way around. Swap them, the counter moves on. The final element in the list, X to Z, those elements are the correct way round, so the counter moves on. No more swaps. And the counter has reached the end of the list, and therefore the second traversal is completed. And there have been three swaps again. So the swaps are still happening, and the list is still not fully, the, the sort is not completed yet. OK, so a third traversal is required because we've still got swaps happening. So at this third traversal, we start at the beginning of the list, compare it, the element value to the one that follows, TR. They're clearly the wrong way round, so we've still got some swaps. RT, the counter moves on. Compare T to W. They're the right way round, so no swap required and the counter moves on. Compare W to X, no swap required, counter moves on. Compare X to Z, no swap required, counter moves on. Counter has now reached the end of the loop. Have we completed the, the sort? Well, there has still been one swap. So as far as this algorithm is concerned, we still need to traverse the list a further time. So this is the last traversal of the list. R, compare it to the value that follows. They're the right way around. No swaps required. Counter moves on. Compare. No swaps required. Counter moves on. Compare. No swaps required. Counter moves on. Compare with the element that follows, no swaps required, counter moves on. The counter has now reached the end of the list and the number of swaps has been zero. There have been no swaps. So at this point, the bubble sort is completed. That was quite a lot of work, wasn't it, to sort a list of five elements. So what, what do we, have we learned about the bubble sort? It's very slow. It's a lot of work. You have to keep going through the list over and over again. If we're working at computer speed, 
with a relatively short list that actually isn't going to matter that much because the whole thing will be done in a fraction of a second however if we're working it on any other kind of list so a list with hundreds or thousands or millions of elements our advice would always be do not use the bubble sort so it's a nice easy thing to remember the bubble sort is slow and we wouldn't use it except if we're working with a very short list in fact how many operations would it take we can count these by hand or write a program to do it but let, let's just have a little think think it through one traversal of a list is n operations it always is so to go right through the list from element zero to the end that takes n operations where n is the number of items in the list remember big o is our worst case scenario so what's the worst that could happen we'd have to go through the whole list n times in fact if the list was in completely reverse order we would have to do that with the bubble sort so we'd have to go through the list n times and we'd have to repeat that traversal another n times so the number of operations is actually as high as n times n what is that called in big O notation? Do you remember? If you don't remember, pause the video and go back and look at the big O uh, presentation, the, the video about the big O values. Uh, what, what level of complexity do we call it if the number of operations is n times n or an, putting it another way, n squared? Is that the slowest possible um, number of operations is it in other words is it the worst level of complexity answer those questions write your answers down to check that you know them pause this video because in a second I'll give you the answers to those to those questions So the answer is where the big O value is n raised to any power, so in this case n squared, the word for that is polynomial complexity. And this is actually the second most complex level. Do you remember the most complex one? It was exponential. Um, so the bubble sort doesn't have exponential complexity, but it does have a high complexity level. We call it polynomial complexity. And the general rule that just tells us that as n gets larger the number of operations gets very large so you should now be able to describe the bubble sort it's traversing the list swapping any items that are the wrong way around and then repeating that traversal over and over again until there are no more swaps you should be able to demonstrate that on paper or if you're my student also by acting it out in class and evaluate it and evaluating it is actually quite easy the evaluation we just say it's a very slow sort we should try to avoid it unless the list itself is very short If you're my student, I've got a worksheet of questions about the bubble sort, so have a go at that. In the next lesson, we'll actually program the bubble sort in Python. So bye for now.